What's good on everybody? Happy Thursday, happy Thursday. Don't forget myself and I believe Joey from CBC will have overtime tomorrow. We will be live at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time here on the channel. Come by, ask questions as always. Um, there's a lot of good information put out from other people to where, I mean, I've got a lot of knowledge from like FedEx, uh, UPS people that have worked there. People that own hobby shops. It's really, really good. So if you ever get a chance to come to one of the lives, we only do it about two to three times a month. It depends on card shows for me on Saturdays and also if we're running our uh, uh, fixed pricing and auction day on that Saturday too. So, yep. Yeah, just want to make sure everybody's tracking that. Um, we got the fantasy football pick em thing that's in. So make sure you guys got your picks in. I'm trying to think, well... Um, let's just move right into the topic. I'm going to start doing a series um, of the Fanatics Takeover. This is what I'm calling it, Takeover, because there's a lot to this, and I'm trying to look at it as both a collector, a uh, person who has a license to get stuff from a distributor, and also as a flipper in standpoint. So it's really hard to separate between the three. Because uh, you get a lot of mixed emotions. And if you guys remember a while back, I did a video where I said I really burnt myself because I couldn't separate myself from being a collector and a distributor both. I wanted everything. It was like Pokemon Go. I got to have all the Pokemon, you know. So this has been really, really uh, more difficult for me because I'm grasping the knowledge. I understand what's going on. But for long term... It's really starting to really make me shift my focus immensely um, just with some of the news. So, there was something that came on CNN today. We'll hit that first. Now, both these links are going to be in the description if you guys want to read this. This was put out September 1st, all right? $18 billion online retailer, Fanatics, shocks the sports world. Because they got, you know, the Major League Baseball contract. And they got the NBA licensing. That's the fact. Now, there's some myths and rumors or whatever you want to call it going on out there. We don't know what's going to happen in 2023. We know that's when the MLBPA or the Players Association for Baseball, that's when Fanatics takes over. And we know tops or the Major League Baseball license like 2025. So here's what I'm thinking, and this, this might have me far-fetched out there. If they cannot use active players, all right, just because of the Players Association contract with Fanatics, I can see them doing a Bowman draft still, but they're going to end up being their first Bowmans will be in, like, college uniform because they can do that. They produce that stuff. They get these guys to sign it before they get into the draft and get drafted by a team. It's completely legal. Um, it's almost like how the college stuff works. So I could see that happening for one. The other part is I could see that even though they still have the baseball license through 2025, if they cannot use any active players, minus Mike Trout, who signed something personally with them, um, I think Trout has like a lifetime contract with him, which makes it even more interesting how he's going to deal with Fanatics. But um, they could still use these young draft picks, or they could mix it because the one thing everybody's forgetting about is the Players Association doesn't count the people that no longer play baseball, like all your Hall of Famers and stuff. We could just see Hall of Fame retired, you know, veteran players out there. I could see that happening as well, too. Um, but I'm sure more and more will come out onto it. But I don't think it'll be the end right there. I think that Top still has a little bit left into him. The other part, when I was reading this, is it's an $18 billion uh, dollar at what they're supposed to be worth or something, right? I, I don't get how they come up with that number. Me thinking just out loud... Tops was valued at like one point something billion dollars or something. And half of that, I think, went to their bazooka candy company thing. So I, I'm not too sure where they assess and come up with that. But it could be true. I'm not sure. I don't do all that stuff. 
But there's a big article here. It talks about this. Now, my takeaway when I read this article, it was basically that they are going, getting rid of the middleman, which means for somebody like me, I have a license so I could use the big distributors, GTS, Peach, and Southern. Most people never heard of them because you have to have a license in order to do all that. Most people think Blowout and David Adams and Leitner Distributors, they're not. Because they up that from a distributor, uh, what the distributor sells it to us for. Some of the products are 10x. Could be anywhere from 2x to 10x. Uh, and 10x, I'm talking about like NT and stuff like that when it comes out. When we used to pay like $400 a box and they're out there selling it at four grand. So, I, I mean, I sat there and really d thought about this. But if you take out that middle person, okay... All of the people like your local card shops that buy direct out of that stuff loses their stuff. What does that mean for your LCSs? <laughs> I can see a lot of them probably going to have some issues. But I'm going to cover that more in the next article that we do here shortly. Um, it also takes out a lot of your breakers because that's what they did. They had to get their licensing. You go to those old school breakers, that means Blowout, Dave and Adams and all them. If they're going straight to the consumer, that means that those guys there are not going to get, you know, 500 cases of freaking NT football or whatever it is. You know, 1,000, 2,000 cases of it. They're not anymore. So then you have to worry about, even though everybody says they can always make sure the site's not going to be robot hacked. We know it is. It's just a given thing. There's always going to be somebody smarter technology that's going to be able to do it. So I sat there and really pondered onto this to where I was like, wow, this is really going to suck because there was a lot of people back in early, like, I'm going to go back like 2012 to like middle of 2016, maybe even beginning of 2017, worked hard to get allocations, you know, to grow and make a business into something they loved. And then all of a sudden, like 2018 with Otani, we saw stuff starting to go up. Basketball a little bit, football a, a little bit too. Then all of a sudden, 19 happened, and we've seen like the emergence of Luka and LeBron stuff starting to take off, and it just pushed prices way, way out of everybody's grasp. I mean, we're talking $800 for a box of Don Russ, either whatever you want to call football or basketball. It's still too expensive. So with this, when you read the IPO, it, t it does sound like they're taking out the distributor, and that was my take onto this. And I was like, that really sucks for a lot of people who have worked hard through the years. Now, granted, I'm going to explain allocation here. Allocation is by the percent, how much you spend per either Tops or Panini. And if it's Panini, it goes by football, you know, whatever sport it is, too. So if you have somebody just breaks tons of Flawless and NT and the high-end stuff, they're going to have massive amounts of everything else. And it's just the way it is. It's the t total amount you spend the previous year and the current year that gives you your allocation. So, and d trust me, there's when you see breakers that have like 100 cases of NT, they didn't get allocated that. I know some of the bigger breakers, and they'd be lucky to get allocated 8 to 10 cases per distributor. The rest are all buying secondary market. But we did a lot of this to our own sales um, out there as collectors, flippers, or whatever you want to say, how, however you want to view it, you know, offhand. That the market itself, Fanatics is blaming the distributors, saying that we can cut the cost. That's that's not correct. I know what I pay per box, and I know what Blowout, David Adams, and Layton set the prices at. That's the area where the stuff with the 3 to 10x is coming into play at. But people pay it. Just like before when we talked about breaks... And if you go on blowout and say the case is three thousand dollars, but yet you see somebody break it at five or six thousand, just add up the cost of the teams. You know what they're making. If it's some obscene price, move on to somebody else. One of the key things on to it, I might have to do another video on that just to explain how that comes about and how I used to know who I wanted to break with. All right, uh, that was pretty much it into this article, but I'll put this link in there. All right. So today, we have another piece that comes out. Mm -mm, this one. This uh, video, I have it on pause here because it started playing. But the CEO, Mr. Rubin, 
Expanding on the reach and taking on trading cards, all right? Th this, wow. When we all started using the word monopolize, really, they came very close to it because they don't own hockey, they don't own soccer, UFC, but they took the three biggest. The three biggest out there. Soccer's big global, but they now want to take all eBay's business, all the grading card business, and all this other stuff. He wants to basically produce the cards, have all the licensing, sell them direct to consumer, DTC, instead of direct to a distributor, it's direct to consumer, which is going to mean like a lot of people used to get cases, aren't going to get cases. And we don't know what the price is. He said he can make it cheaper, you know, more affordable. Okay, well, for, so instead of four thousand for your NT box or flaw, or yeah, your NT box, we'll say now you're going to spend three. That's still way, way high, way high, insane amount. But when you look at it, they want to produce the cards. They want to be able to sell direct to consumer, and they did. Somewhere I read he's still gonna they're still gonna allow certain stores to sell their products like that's already with them. They're not gonna let new people be under their little umbrella. They want to own it all. And when I say that, that is to me my opinion, my strict opinion. You guys let me know what you think. But I think with that there, it's bad. You need people to compete into this hobby in order to produce a better card long term because all they're going to be like well we don't if they don't like it too bad type deal that's going to be the mentality i can see them flopping within you know two or three years i can see them doing really well both ways i'm probably leaning more on to you know flopping because i've noticed a lot of people saying they're done with fanatic starts but let me get back to my point they want to produce the cards they want to sell it direct to consumer they want us to use Fanatics to sell their cards on. So eliminating eBay. Uh, I guess trade too from somebody who's talking about trading on to it. But I do know selling through them. And they want to grade. Now if you guys ever been to Fanatics website. I'm going to pull this up real quick. It's right here. They do sell stuff. Right here is their boxes and wax. Oh I think I froze guys. Give me a second. There's their autographs with their slabs and all that stuff on there. And they do sell PSA and stuff like that on here. Just so you guys can see. Alright, let me flip back. Alright, I just don't agree that you're going to produce the card. You're going to sell it direct to consumer. Which I was really fighting on there. Then you want us to use your platform to outdo every other platform out there. And on top of it, now you want to grade your own cards that you're producing. I, I don't see how that's going to be subjective in a way because people are like, oh no, give it a 10. It's a Fanatics card. We're doing our own grading. I mean, I can see all kinds of stuff. Imagine all the stuff we talk about, you know, crap on with PSA, with Beckett, and all these other new companies that came out. Really, nobody really craps on SGC other than their modern prices aren't, you know, real good. Every other company, I can tell you, we all have issues with across the board. But just way too much onto it. Let me pull this down real quick. I have some notes on the other side here. So, again, he, oh, and storage. They want to store your cards in a vault like PWCC. I forgot about storage. So, Having grading, storage, direct to consumer sales, manufacturing, all under one company, along with, like I said, everything else going on. Uh, it, it's like he wants to cut everybody out in the middle, and at the same time frame, they want all the pieces of the pie. And that's where he's thinking that the company is going to be worth $18 billion. Now, if you remember, there was an article a while back that stated eBay grew 142% in 2022 in the uh, sports card market. That's how big it went up. And they uh, were selling 4 million more than in 2019. That came out, was it February or March we talked about? Somewhere around there. So, with that being said, 
I, I'm just, I understand you want to control it all, but there has to be somewhere out there, in my opinion, that we're going to not own every little piece of the company. And this starts going back into, like, all these hedge funds and everything else. I, th I can't even think of all the stuff that's come out. I'm going to put this back up for you guys. But the hedge funds and everything that's come out. You know, I got it. If you got the money, you got the investors, you want to launch your own takeover of the sports card industry. But if you're going to try to control it, I can tell you there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, there might be for it. But there's going to be a good chunk that's not, and they're going to walk away. There's also a chunk that's going to walk away and still open up older stuff. They would rather save up and buy a $15,000 box of, like, upper deck or something. I don't know. I'm just thinking of exquisite prices. So, yes, $15,000 for one of the older exquisite boxes is probably about right right around now. But th this is really, really starting to shape up now. As I said, as time goes on, we're going to learn more and more and more. I'm sure there's going to be people that's going to end up leaving Tops to go work at Fanatics and Panini, and they're probably going to steal graders. Or we call it steal graders from PSA, Beckett, and all these people come over there. Because originally I was told Fanatics uses Beckett to certify all their autographs. What happens if they start offering those people more money to come work for them? Now Beckett don't have that team in place anymore. Think about it, because they're already paying way more for these licensing what, what's paying somebody an extra twenty, thirty, fifty thousand, hundred thousand 30000 100000 a year to come work for them and do uh, authentic grading exclusively? Now, like I said, this all could fall. It, it could it just bust completely on them. And then we'll just be sitting there waiting and waiting for the day their licensing's expire. And what was the, the NFL was, what, like 20 years or something crazy? One of them was a long time frame they got that license for. I don't know. I was really hoping that they were going to make it fun again. Because when I think of Fanatics and what they started with with their um, products and making like, you know, you could go as a breaker, order X amount of jerseys autographed and, you know, and make your own little break thing up onto it. But if they would have said, okay, Tops, Panini, Upper Deck, anybody else want a piece of the pie? This is how much you got to pay us, how many products we allow you to do per year. You figure out when you release them and let people compete with all the sports. It would have been really good. Really good in my eyes because we just saw Upper Deck come back into basketball, um, baseball, football. We just seen Tops back into football and basketball. You would have seen... Um, Panini now having licensed ba um, baseball. I, I thought that would be really good. And they set out how many products they can make so we don't have all these junk products that I call them coming out every month that we're like, ugh. Because believe me, back in the day, you had to buy X amount of them junk products in order to get the good product. And then eventually what happened was there were just so many people who started figuring out how to get their licensing and doing all that stuff that they didn't need us to buy all the junk products. You either bought them or you didn't. And then they went and changed how they did allocation completely. So I, I want to see what everybody's thoughts are on to this. Watch the video. It's like three minutes long or something. It, no more, more than five. I think it's like two minutes and 52 seconds or something. It, just listen to the talk on to it. I just, I'm not sold on it. I'm a person that was, uh, I had to, when I was in the Army, I don't really talk about this stuff much. I did recruiting for three years early on. I left four years in Hawaii, did three years of recruiting. And let me tell you something. To sell somebody a lifestyle or a job for anywhere from two years and X amount of weeks up to six years, that's a hard thing to do. Um, this here, and it, it, with that, what I learned there was, you know, how people are able to use certain words to persuade people into... You know, thinking things are going to be luxurious now. That's why I said I'm not sold on it. Because I used to sell, you know, lives basically in a way. You know, a way of life. It was a job. And, you know, what they were always sending us these little um, how to be better salesman classes really made me think of how crooked the world was out there at a young age. I was, I think I was 22 when I started recruiting. And it, it brought a different aspect on when I would go out there and buy anything. 
of what that person was saying to me. And I mean, when they try to get cozy and, you know, be your buddy, buddy, I knew it was just for my money. I just never really paid much attention to it. I always wanted the hard facts and, you know, I, I'm just not sold on this whole thing with fanatics right now until we start hearing some more on to it. But the direct to consumer is going to make a lot of people happy. It's going to make very few upset. When you start looking at everything they're doing from production to storage to, sell, to then selling with them, like, like they're going to knock out eBay's whole thing. Instead of paying 13 to eBay, you'll pay them 8%. Why should I do that? I grade the card. I can sell it on my slabs. 1% seller's fee, 1% buyer's fee. You know? Beats out a lot of auction houses even where there's 10% buyer fees on to it. But, yeah, just to watch this. Let me see what you guys think about it all because... A lot of times, I might be missing something, and it's always good to read through the comments onto it. Don't be harsh, really killing fanatics and all the grading companies out there. Just think about this. If everything was under one umbrella, would it be better or not? I, I don't see it being better, because we already complained that Collector's Universe, you know, by PSA and all this other stuff underneath their umbrella, Golden Auctions... Well, now we're looking at this here, people merging and taking over the rest of the, you know, the stuff out there. So, quite interesting, quite interesting. All right, I've been going way over 20 minutes. Normally don't do videos this long ever. But this is just a lot of stuff that's been on my mind. One, they push some of my stuff out as my thoughts, opinion, and some of the facts out there. And then see... What everybody else is thinking, because I the way I see this, a lot of the younger collectors are going to dig the Fanatics thing. People that are probably, I don't know, 35 and up are going to be where you're going to start seeing people be like, I'm not down with this, I'm out. I mean, I know t diehard Tops people that, you know, argued to a point in the forum of why they like Tops and when they were getting out. And people just talk, well, Tops produces crappy cards and all this other stuff. Just like grading, it's all on what that person wants to do. But in the end, it comes down to how much money is that person going to spend. If he leaves, that's that much less money being spent in a hobby. So, I don't know. Like I said, let me know what you guys think on this. And we'll probably keep doing these as I keep on getting information probably monthly. And we'll just keep calling the Fanatics Takeover. Because they pretty much are. They're taking over the card industry. All right. You guys have a good rest of the week. Hopefully see you tomorrow night in overtime. We'll talk some more on this stuff there. Other than that, you guys have a good rest of the week. And hopefully see you tomorrow night.